Living the Life You Love TV show. The following program deals with primary care, Chinese medicine, Qigong, and plant-based diets. It is for awareness, education, and informational purposes only. The facts, advice, opinions of the featured guests are his own and are not necessarily those of the producers of this program. Hi, that was Dr. Cooch, my director and co-host. I'm Catherine Maruri, the producer and your host. This is Living the Life You Love, episode 10. A Wall Street whiz walked away from a successful career and became a Qigong grandmaster. The story of Dr. George Xavier Love Jr. This series features people who have found a way to live the life they love in service to others. Today's featured guest is a graduate of the International Institute of Traditional Medicine in Montreal. He is a brilliant physician and a master in the fields of primary care, Chinese medicine, yoga, massage therapy, fitness training, and acupuncture. Additionally, he is the first non-Chinese Qigong Grandmaster, founder of the Qigong MD program at the Blue Dragon Qigong Academy, an innovator of numerous new techniques for meditation, dance, breathing, and the designer of healthy and tasty plant-based delicacies. He's also a holistic self-empowerment educator dedicated to helping his students and clients achieve health literacy, learn preventive medicine techniques, and live a very long and vital life. He is also my personal health coach, who I had the pleasure of spending seven intense days last month in his liberating, exciting, and life-changing course aimed at helping me transition to a healthier lifestyle. It is truly a pleasure to announce and present to our audience, Grandmaster Dr. George Xavier Love Jr. Welcome, Dr. Love. Thank you for having me. It's uh, quite a pleasure. You're very welcome. Before I go any further, I have an announcement to make to our audience. Dr. Love has a gift for those who wish to empower themselves with a healthier lifestyle. Stay tuned, you do not want to miss this. Dr. Love, let me take you back to the beginning of your path to Qigong. Before Qigong, you had been a massage therapist for seven years, a fitness and yoga instructor for five years, and you were doing quite well as a Wall Street commodity trader. If you just stayed on that path, your future would have been predictable and lucrative. How However, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, one day you found yourself at the UN and a once in a lifetime chance elevator ride changed your entire life. Tell us what happened. Well, my, um, my Tai Chi teacher, uh, Da Lu, was teaching Tai Chi at the UN and he invited me to the class. And I was rushing late and I got on the wrong elevator and there was the Dalai Lama in the elevator. And in 1979, not too many people knew who the Dalai Lama was, but I did. And I was shocked. I was in awe. I was stunned. I was stuttering. And he just kept smiling at me. And he says, is there anything that I can do? And I said, I, I don't know what to ask you. <laughs> and he said, how would you like to change three lifetimes of karma in just 30 days? And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I want to know how to do. So I had my briefcase and I'm like fumbling for a piece of uh, notebook paper to write. And he said, be good, be kind, become passionate. And I heard become passionate. So for the next year, I was passionate about everything. You should quit smoking. You should quit drinking. You should stop eating meat. So I was just uh, aggressively happy with everyone in promoting lifestyle change. Then I went to hear him speak in person. And what he said was, be good, be kind, be compassionate. And I said, 
do you remember meeting me in the elevator a year ago? And he said, yes. And I said, what is compassion? How can I develop compassion for people? And he said, stand in your power while you hold the hand of your friend who's going through something. It doesn't mean lending them money. It doesn't mean giving them your car. It doesn't even mean letting them stay in your apartment stand in your power and hold their hand. And my mind was completely blown. I, I didn't know what to do with this information, but I knew I had to learn to develop compassion. And then he said, what do you do for a living? And I said, I'm, I work on Wall Street, I'm a commodities broker. And he said, you should live a life of service. And I said, well, how do I do that? And he said, what is it that you wanted to do when you were younger? And I said, I have no idea. He said, well, what did your parents want you to do? I said, oh, my parents wanted me to go to, be, to medical school. They wanted me to be a doctor. And he said, well, is that still an option for you? And I'm like, I guess. He said, well, let me introduce you to my personal physician, Dr. Yeshi Dondon. So he made the arrangement. I went to meet Dr. Dondon. And he cured five people of incurable cancer with acupuncture and herbs. And that was it. Okay, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. So for the next year, I became a student of Dr. Dondon. Then he was recalled to India, to the refugee community. And then I was like, okay, now what? And then I heard that some guy from Canada was treating racehorses with acupuncture. So I went to the racetrack to find him and ask him, how do I get training? And he says, you're so lucky. I just opened a school in Montreal. Why don't you come up and see me? So next thing you know, I'm on a plane to Montreal. I meet him, his son and his daughter. And next thing you know, I'm enrolled in the International Institute of Traditional Chinese Medicine. Two years later, I graduate, I come to, uh, back to New York, and I had met a gentleman at uh, the school, uh, Dr. Mike Smith, who was running the acupuncture detox program at Lincoln Hospital in the Bronx. Are you familiar with that hospital? No? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes, of course. I'm from Harlem. Okay, so you know Lincoln Hospital. Yes. Okay. So I worked at Lincoln Detox. Mm -hmm. And while I was there, I met every luminary in the acupuncture world. I met Dr. Monica from Japan. I met Dr. Anton Jaya Surya from Sri Lanka, who had the largest English-speaking acupuncture hospital in the world. I met Dr. Lee from Korea, Dr. Aja Lee. So I met everybody and anybody in the acupuncture world. And that was my start. Now, how did you come in contact with the art of Qigong? I mean, uh, Qigong. Qigong, okay. Mm -hmm. So about a year after I graduated from acupuncture school, I read this magazine article about this woman named Guo Lin who had healed herself of a particularly virulent form of uterine cancer with Qigong. So they sent her home from the hospital to die. She was cleaning up. She found these papers that her grandfather had written, some notes on a piece of paper. So she started following. And three months later, she goes back to the hospital and she said, I'm not dead yet. And they said, what did you do? She said, I did these exercises. And they said, that's Qigong. And they converted that hospital to a Qigong hospital. There are now 10 Qigong hospitals in China. So after I read that magazine article, I said, I have to find somebody to teach me Qigong. And I asked around and I found there was some guy in Chinatown. So next thing you know, I'm in Chinatown looking for Master Li. And lo and behold, we hit it off. And it took him about a month before he asked me, what did I do for a living? I said, I'm an acupuncture physician. And then he said, well, you should come work with me. 
close your practice and work in my office. Wow. Uh, hmm, <laughs> no. So I wrestled with it for about three weeks because I know what I'm doing and now I'm going to quit and go work with this other guy. And I don't know how much money I'm going to make. And so my head was going through this. And then one day I woke up and I said, when is the next time a Qigong master is going to ask me to work with him? And I made the decision and I've never regretted it. And so for the next six years, I was his apprentice. Catherine? Dr. Love, my first question, what is Chinese medicine and is it in fundamental conflict with Western medicine? Okay, that's an excellent question. Chinese medicine is based on the circulation of oxygenated blood that circulates through the body. Now, when you electromagnetically charge the blood, we call that qi. So the qi and the blood flow together, the qi moves the blood and the blood pumps the heart. Western medicine, on the other hand, looks only at symptoms. They look at what's wrong and they look to treat the symptom instead of the cause. And they believe that the blood pumps the heart. Mm. I'm sorry, they believe that the heart pumps the blood. Now, there's no question that the heart is actually a pump, but whether the heart speeds up or slows down is because of the blood and not the heart. So that's the fundamental conflict. Chinese medicine treats the cause, which is qi stagnation and inflammation leading to organ malfunction and breakdown and disease, where Western only looks at treating the symptom. So you've been a licensed acupuncture physician since 1986. That is is acupuncture now more accepted and respected in the West as a viable and valued medical procedure? Every year, there are more and more people jumping on the bandwagon of acupuncture and Chinese medicine, which includes herbs and massage and lifestyle. So it's not just acupuncture. Now, 1984, the World Health Organization made a list of 96 diseases that acupuncture was considered safe and effective for. Mm, that was my next question. What can it cure and treat and how does it work? Okay, so the Chinese don't really care to explain to the West how it works. Right. They really don't care. But I'd like to give you an analogy. Imagine you're up in a traffic helicopter looking down at a traffic jam. In your lap, you have a computer. You hit one button, all the red lights turn green. You hit another button, all the green lights turn red. So by hitting the buttons on your laptop, you can change the flow of traffic. Now, wherever there's a traffic jam, there's pain. Where there's no traffic, there's weakness. So you, as the air traffic controller, want to make sure there's an even flow of energy through the entire body. So you're going to hit those buttons using the acupuncture points to ensure an even flow. I see. You are a grandmaster of Qigong. What exactly is Qigong? Okay, so now Qi, as we said, is the electromagnetic charging of the oxygenated blood. Gong means hard work or mastery. So another translation of Qigong would be vitality exercises. Okay, now, for instance, if you were angry, would your shoulders have a tendency to go up? If, if you were under stress, you might have a tendency to do that. If you were worried about something, maybe your abdomen, your stomach muscles would contract. If you had fear, maybe your low back would 
would tighten up. And if you had anxiety, your hamstrings would tighten up. So any type of negative emotional situation would cause you to constrict. So when those muscles tighten, the blood doesn't flow, the oxygen doesn't flow, nutrients don't flow, nerves get starved, organs get starved, break down, and then five, 10, 15 years later, you get sick. So it's a process to get sick. So, what, so what Qigong does, it, it reverses the process. It forces the blood into the muscles that were cramped up. It forces oxygen to move. It forces the nutrients to feed the nerves. So you can't afford to get sick. And prevention is the only real cure. So by doing Qigong on a daily basis, you prevent disease from taking place. So tell me, Dr. Love, what is your special sauce that makes your school of Qigong so unique? Well, when you go to medical school or any kind of technical school, you develop tricks. And there's something called mnemonics or mm. alliteration. So um, uh, right now I can't think of one, but you, you come up with an abbreviation uh, to help you memorize something difficult. So what I did is I took music and lyrics and songs to help you memorize the movement. So one of the songs is heart, lung, liver, spleen, right kidney, left kidney. So you actually touch the parts of the body. So yeah. when I feed that up, put it to music, it becomes fun and a little bit silly. It's sort of like the Macarena of health. So that's my special sauce, is turning it into a fun, silly dance. That yeah. The only way you're going to do it is if it's fun. Because if you, if you make it a chore, you're like, oh, do I have to? Oh, I don't feel like it today. So that's my special sauce. So your dance moves help heal the body. Could you illustrate that for us? <laughs> Kidney, left kidney, ching, ching, heart, heart, lung, heart, heart, lung, liver, spleen, liver, liver, spleen, liver, right kidney, left kidney, right kidney, left kidney, ching, 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 heart, lung, heart, heart, lung, liver, spleen, liver, Liver, spleen, liver, right kidney, left kidney, right kidney, left kidney, spleen, kidney, chi, kidney, chi, heart, lung, liver, spleen, kidney, chi, kidney, chi, heart, lung, liver, spleen, kidney, chi, kidney, Okay, that's enough. <laughs> okay. So my next question is, how many dances have you developed and does it take long to master them, especially if you can't dance? Catherine, are you talking about me? No way. <laughs> Dr. Love? Um, there's 33 dances and I teach them in, in sequences of six dances at a time. And so it takes uh, about a month to learn six dances. Okay. So I think it's easy. I think it's worth it. You can walk, you can dance. Yeah. Mm, that's good oh. to know. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> cool. Most experts agree that meditation is a vital tool for effective preventative health care plan. Nonetheless, nobody does it. So what makes your meditation program so effective? Well, here is another special sauce. Okay, so 
there's three aspects to meditation that's effective. Number one is posture. If you don't sit properly, you're not going to be able to meditate. Gotcha. Number two is breathing. You have to breathe properly. And number three, you have to be able to visualize. You have to see something. So you may have heard of a mandala or uh, you may have heard of a yantra, which is a geometric shape, uh, various geometric shapes in a pattern inside a square, inside of a circle. You may have heard of those things. Um, yeah. You may stare at the clouds, okay? You might visualize horses running through the clouds. You might stare at the ocean and just watch the waves. So you have to be able to visualize, you have to have the right posture, and you have to breathe. So you have to have a breathing technique down. Those three things are critical to meditation. Now, my innovation is to meditate at night while you're falling asleep. I call it sleepitation. Got it. So you can't say, I don't have time, because you're already in bed. No excuses. No excuses. So I give you affirmations and I give you visualizations to do while you're falling asleep. And just before you fall asleep, I have you chant. And I've got several different chants. And you chant for 10, 15, 20 minutes. And the chanting creates an internal vibration that clears the gunk out of your brain. And that's the reason why people can't meditate because their brains are so hyperactive. So the chanting creates a, uh, an energetic calming effect on the nervous system. And then you, you're reciting your affirmation and then you're visualizing the outcome and then you're doing your breathing and then boom, you're in meditation. Got it. Moving right along, going into our training program. I recall that my training program began with an interview. I told you about my goals and my desire to change my mindset. And so you began the treatment by telling me, uh, well, basically helping me to clarify my goals, showing me how to detoxify my body, my digestive system, and teaching me the importance of self-love. Do you do this for all of, of all of your clients? Absolutely. I, okay. have, I, have my own, I have my own opinion, but I'm not going to be effective unless I give you what you want. So I have to interview to find out what your goals are. And then I can help you clarify what your goals are. And I can say, we can do this, we can do this. And I give you a couple of choices that helps you anchor your process, okay? So our objective is to change your lifestyle. So it takes 21 days to establish a habit. It takes 90 days to establish a lifestyle. And it takes nine months to build a better body. Right. So it's a, it's a one-year commitment through this process. And not everybody wants to make a commitment. Some people say, well, just take the pain out of my elbow. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that's all you want? Oh, that's what I'll do. But yeah. do you want more out of your life? Do you want to sleep better? Do you want to have more energy? Do you want to have more charisma? You know, do you want to have more vitality? Yeah. You know? Do you want to make your girlfriend happy? You want to make your boyfriend happy? You know, so these are all questions that I ask to help you clarify your goals. Can you tell our audience why does your program advocate plant, a plant-based diet and are vegetables superior to meat? Okay. A hundred years ago, people raised their own cows, their own chickens, their own goats. Okay. And they killed them themselves. They knew what they fed them, and then they killed them personally, and then they ate them. Yeah. Then after World War II was over, people started sending their animals to the slaughterhouse to be slaughtered. And then they put them on 
refrigerated cars and sent them. So there was a, a, cattle, <clears throat> a cattle drive to the Chicago area and they slaughtered the cows in Chicago. Right. Then they put the meat on refrigerated cars and sent them all over the United States. Now, if I am starving and there's a deer walking by and there's three inches of snow on the ground, I'm going to kill the deer. And I'm going to eat the deer. And the life force of that deer is going to sustain me. But if I'm going to kill the deer, hang it on a hook and age it for a year and then spray fake blood on it and then dip it in bleach to kill the bacteria, there's no life force in that meat. And that's why I advocate a plant-based diet because the way meat is raised and killed in this country is poisonous to the environment and it's poisonous to your health. I agree. And why does your program advocate avoidance of dairy products and cheese? Okay, so again, cow's milk is for baby cows. Rabbit's milk is for baby rabbits. Goat's milk is for baby goats. Camel's milk is for baby camels. Why would you drink the milk of another animal? Okay, there was a, a, a spoof in England where they gave people uh, condensed milk and they told people that it came from a dog. Mm. And the people spit, they threw the glass, they cursed out the person, and they're like, we, we were just joking, it, it's really cow's milk. But we're horrified at drinking dog's milk. And DNA-wise, we're closer to dogs than we are to cows. Wow. <laughs> Seriously? So the protein in cow's milk is to grow rapidly a baby cow from 500 pounds to 2,000 pounds in like six months. Now, human babies take years and years and years and years to double in size. Okay? Yeah. So, yeah, no, cow's milk is not for humans. What about fish and eggs? Are they as harmful to humans as meat? <clears throat> okay. Or now, milk? have you heard of Fukushima? No. It is a... Uh, radioactive plant in Japan and 10 years ago there was an incident where the radioactivity came out of Fukushima and went into the ocean and they are now finding deformed fish in the Atlantic even though Japan is in the Pacific okay now we think that there's seven oceans. There's only one ocean. They're mm. all linked. All the oceans are linked. It's one big waterway. So all the radioactive waste from Japan is now in the water. Now, how many millions of barrels of oil have been spilled in the oceans that you know about? Just say the last 10 years. Mm. Okay, the two largest oil spills ever in the world were in 2018 and 2019. So, do I want to eat fish where the water is toxic? Are the reefs dying all over the world? Mm -hmm. Kind of, sort of. Australian Great Barrier Reef is shrinking because of toxicity in the water. So you want to eat fish? Yeah, you might as well eat rat meat, you know? Okay, moving on to the next question. <laughs> Most experts, including you, tell us that too much sugar is bad for you. What about substitutes and what do you use? Okay, so sugar and salt are both drugs. Just like cocaine, just like heroin, they are drugs and they affect your nervous system the way drugs affect your nervous system. So you can have about 
three teaspoons of sugar and three teaspoons of salt mm -hmm. a day. That's about it. That's your limit. Anything over that is going to yang out your nervous system. Okay. So what do I use as a substitute? I don't substitute. I don't put sugar in my tea. I don't put sugar on anything. Okay. If I want something sweet, I eat fruit. Got it. Particularly goji berries or manu manuka raisins, which are quite expensive. What about honey? Okay, honey is an animal product that is stolen from bees. And honey is actually regurgitated um, plant nectar. Mm. So, the, so the bees eat the nectar of the plants, then they go back to the hive and they literally vomit that into these cases that we call honey. So I really am not interested in eating bee regurgitation. Well, everything that tastes good is not good for you. I, I agree. So when I visited your facilities a week later, I was feeling lighter on my feet, thinking clearer, having more energy, et cetera. So I was juicing twice a day, going to the beach to do qigong. I was also giving up my favorite food, chicken and cheese. So could you explain to our audience what was happening to my mind and body? Wow, that's a tall order uh, <laughs> to explain what's happening in your mind. All right. Um, so the juicing gives your body, uh, super saturates your blood with high quality vegetarian nutrients. So that allowed your body to detoxify, to get rid of the excess garbage that you've accumulated. Okay. So we're super saturating the bloodstream with nutrients. And then the body's like, oh, good. We, now we can put out the garbage. Open the back door. Throw those boxes away. Shovel that stuff out. So that's why you're detoxing when you're taking vegetable juice. Now, your brain has a cutoff switch. So when, you, when, when, the, when the nutrient level reaches a certain height, the brain says, okay, we're good. We don't need any more. So, for example, let's say you ate a bowl of ice cream. Your brain is like, ah, no nutrients. And you're like, okay, let me eat some chocolate cake. Brain is like, ah, no nutrients. And then you're like, okay, cheese. Brain's like, nope, no nutrients there. Okay, potato chips. And you keep eating and eating and eating, and your brain is not satisfied because you don't have the nutrients, so it doesn't cut off the switch. Because we're malnourished because you're malnourished, you're overfed and undernourished. Makes so a lot when of sense. you drink the juicing, then your brain is like, we're good. Yeah, light bulb turns on. Ding. <laughs> your, your digestive system needs fiber. So that's why we ate one meal a day. Mm, yes. So I if saw. we ate salad, so we had a big salad, so we had juice for breakfast, big salad, juice for dinner. That's the way I eat normally all the time. And if I'm extra hungry, I'll have mango or pineapple or oranges. Okay, I'll eat fruit. So all my snacks are fruit, which satisfies my sweet craving. Too. My sweet tooth, because I have one too. Yes. Well, uh, one, more, one more try at sugar. What about artificial sweeteners? Okay, before we get into that, Human beings are the only mammals that cannot make vitamin C. Vitamin C is contained in fruits that are sweet. So biologically, we're wired for sweet. We're always looking for sweet because we need that vitamin C. Okay? Now, um, what's the number one artificial sweetener that you know? Sweet and low. Sweet and low. Okay. The secretary of the guy who owned that company 
was my patient when I had my clinic in New York. She told me he had both his legs amputated, mm. both. And he used sweet and low breakfast, lunch, and dinner because he believed in his product. So she came to me for dun, 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 diabetes. <laughs> and I said, how come you're not using sweet and low? She said, after I saw my bosses get his legs cut off, I'm not touching sweet and low. I get it. I understand. So all the artificial sweeteners are worse than the actual sugar. So I tell people, if you're that crazy that you need a sweet, eat the sugar. Don't go with the artificial. I agree. Now, there are good artificial sweeteners. One is coconut sugar. Okay, another one is called um, uh, mamortica fruit. Is that the monk fruit? That's the monk fruit, exactly. Mm -hmm. So coconut sugar, monk fruit, and there's another one that you might know called yacon. It's from mm -hmm. uh, South America, Central America. Yacon, Y-A-C-O-N. And they make a syrup out of yacon, and that's very low glycemic. Of course, Kuj would ask the question of sugar. Hmm. He, he needs some sweet in his life. <laughs> yeah, move right along. So many people are contemplating a, a plant-based diet, right? But they think it's going to be unattractive and boring like rabbit food. I can testify that your dishes are not only delicious, but they are visually stimulating, nutritious, and vary in taste. Why is that important and how do you do it? Okay, first of all, if you're a kid, if it doesn't look right, you're not gonna eat it. Your mother could say, oh, this is good for you. And you're like, no, nah, I don't like the way it looks. Okay, now, um, what's that thing? Uh, it's, uh, it's from Middle Eastern food. It's chickpea flour, they roll into little balls. What is that called? Hummus? Um, okay, it doesn't matter. So kids think it's meat. And so they eat it thinking that it's meat, but it's actually fried chickpea flour. Okay? So kids grow up watching television. And what do they see? They see fried chicken. They see hot dogs. They see hamburgers. So anything that looks like that. So this particular dish is tofurkey with sweet potatoes. Right. Now, someone who doesn't know would think, oh, that looks like sausage. And they would dig into that because it looks appetizing. It does. So color, texture, mouthfeel, and of course, taste. Now, this particular dish is a, um, a pesto that I made. And if you, if you look into it, you'll see that there are uh, pistachio seeds and cilantro. And so, um, so cilantro, pistachio, uh, garlic, olive oil, a little um, curry powder, a little soy sauce. And that became a pesto, which became um, a cracker dip, a bread spread, a veggie dip, or a salad dressing. These are little uh, ancho chilies from South America. The trade name is called Sweetie Drops. Uh, you might be able to find it. I saw it on, uh, um, on uh, flatbread. And all they had was um, Parmesan cheese, cilantro on flatbread with these little, uh, they look like tomatoes and they're, they're piquant and they are delicious. And I tracked them down. I asked that guy, where did you get these? I have to find them. And I tracked them down and I buy it by the can. So color, texture, flavor, mouthfeel. And then my super secret is called salad scissors. And I gave uh, Catherine a pair as a present so she can yeah. have her own salad. Because I'm chopping up my own salad now. That's right. So... 
Dr. Love, could you share some examples of diseases and illnesses that you've successfully cured or arrested through your unique combination and knowledge of Chinese medicine, acupuncture, qigong, and your unique plant-based program? Okay, so before I launch into that answer, I don't cure anything. Got it. What I do is I set up the environment that helps you support yourself so you can cure it. That's point number one. Point number two, Chinese medicine is not in the curing business. Chinese medicine and acupuncture is to normalize and equalize the flow of energy through the body. Mm -hmm. So before you get sick, you say, oh, my shoulder, oh, my back, oh, my knee. And you have various aches and pains for years True. before you get sick. So you go to the doctor and he tests your blood pressure and he says, oh, your blood pressure is high. I'm going to write you a prescription. You're going to take this every day for the rest of your life. What? What? Blood pressure is situational. Your blood pressure goes up and down all day long, depending on the, the, the conditions, right? Your boss says, do you have that report for me? How come you didn't do this? Your blood pressure is going to shoot up. Your neighbor comes in with a little kitty cat and you're like, oh, kitty, kitty. Blood pressure goes down. Yeah, let's test your blood pressure when you're playing with a kitty. Oh, you'll never take any medication. Your blood pressure is low. You see what I'm saying? So the, the basis of Western is on testing something that's situational, okay? It's not a lifetime uh, curse that you're going to take uh, medication for the rest of your life. Your blood sugar goes up and down during the day. You wake up, you're hungry. You want to eat something. Late at night, you're lonely. You're scared. You're tired. And then you want to eat something. And now your stomach is bloated late at night. And then you wake up and you test your blood sugar and your blood sugar's high because you ate late at night. So the whole testing. A lot of people eat. A lot of people eat after nine o'clock at night and then go to bed at eleven. Or I know people who eat at midnight and go to right to bed at one a.m. And then they test their blood sugar and oh, your blood sugar is one hundred and fifty. Oh my God, I have diabetes. So the whole testing thing is wackadoodle from my perspective. So from a Chinese medicine perspective, what I want to do is equalize and normalize the flow of blood through every part of your body. So you have six joints, shoulder, elbow, wrist, hip, knee, ankle. So if I teach you how to dance for 20 minutes twice a day and you get those joints moving, then there's no stagnation. And if there's no stagnation, there's no inflammation. And if there's no inflammation, there's no disease. Now, to be fair, you fall down the steps, you get hit by a car, somebody throws you out of a window, you've got some serious injury. <laughs> now, do not take me to the emergency room. Take me to Chinatown, find me a bone setter, and let that bone setter work his magic to put my bones back into joints. I don't want anybody in the emergency room cutting me open. That's my personal preference. I'm not saying, I'm not recommending that people ignore emergency medicine. I'm just saying that's what I would do. Got it. And, and the other thing is infection. Now, the Chinese do not believe in the germ theory. Why not? Because when you're born, you have three lung parasites that you got from your mother when she was pregnant. When you're born, you have 250 million viruses that you got from your mother when she was pregnant. You have 250,000 bacteria floating in your blood that you got from your mother. So you're born with bacteria, virus, fungus, and parasites. So that doesn't make you sick. It's your immune system that gets diminished that makes you sick. Now, what is your immune system? It's you have six types of specialized white blood cells 
that either implode, explode, smother, search and destroy, slice up, slice and dice, bacteria, virus, fungus, and parasites. It is only when your immune system gets diminished that the bacteria, virus, fun fungus, and parasites proliferate. So it's not the germ theory that makes you sick. It's whether your immune system is strong enough to keep them locked in the basement. And that's what I do. That's what Qigong does. That's what Chinese medicine does. That's what acupuncture does is rebuilds and gets your immune system to be super strong so that you never get sick. Prevention is the only real cure. So do people need to go see you and Delray Beach like I did for their own personal assessment, health analysis, and to learn your techniques? Do they need to or do they want to? Okay. Now, I have patients all over the world. I have helped several people avoid surgery that I've never seen. I've helped three people who had prostate cancer get rid of their cancer that I've never seen. It was all on the phone. So I do telephone consultations. And now, thanks to Kuj, I now have Zoom. I never had Zoom before. So thank you for that. So I can counsel people via video anywhere in the world. And we start with a 21-day program. Now, we know that being overweight is the biggest predictor of cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. All the studies over the last 47 years have shown that. So if we can cut your weight by 10%, by 20%, by 25%, if we can just trim, we reduce that risk. So how do we do that? We put you on a 21-day program. And so <clears throat> our signature program is 21 days to be well. So we start you with juicing as we did with Catherine. Mm -hmm. So we do one juice a day for the evenings. Then we go to two juices a day, morning and evenings. Then we go to four juices a day. Then we do all raw foods. And that's our 21 day program. And it's so easy to follow that you don't have to come to Delray Beach. But to anchor it, to lock it in and make sure you're successful, you should come to Delray Beach. What do you think about that, Kathleen? I agree. I feel like I needed the personal interaction and I also enjoyed and was very excited to meet your students. Okay. You have a series of provocative and fun demonstrations and techniques based on your studies, practice, and of course, tradition. Um, there's three of them I would like you to talk about. One is first sing for your power. Okay, so they did a cross section of the human heart and they found strings in the heart. Zing went to strings of my heart <clears throat> was a song actually written by a medical student. So when you oh, so the only way you can make a sound is if you push the air out of your diaphragm past the vocal cords. So in order for the air to get from the diaphragm to here, it's got to go past your heart. So when you sing, you vibrate the heart. Now the heart sits in a little nest. So when you do certain exercise, you lift the heart out of the nest so fat and fluid can drain. When your heart is hurt, when your heart is nervous, when you feel you heartbroken, when you feel grief and sorrow and a sense of loss, then your heart gets constricted. So sing, singing increases your power and it restores you to energetic integrity. And that's why singers have a commanding presence. And we love singers. And we have all these TV shows where the star is the singer. And we have all these uh, people that used to sing in church that are now pop stars. <laughs> so 
I think it's pretty obvious that singing is going to put you in touch with your power. Now, <clears throat> in the chakra system, we just saw a chakra chart. The third chakra has to do with personal power. The third chakra is connected to the diaphragm. The diaphragm is the muscle that pushes the air out of the lungs. Now, when you breathe in, the lungs expand. What happens to the blood in the lungs? It goes out. When you breathe out, the diaphragm pushes up against the bottom of the lungs, pushing the air out, and then the blood goes in. So it is that diaphragmatic pressure that forces the blood in and out. So it is your breathing that speeds the blood and it's the blood that pumps the heart. And that's why we sing, Kuj. And I'm going to teach you how to sing next week. So you're going to teach me how to sing, and you're going to teach me how to dance. I'm going to teach you how to sing and dance. You that's think awesome. you're an entertainer now? I'm going to be an entertainer. Yes. I, can't, I can't wait for this. Now, the other workshop you have is 14-Day Juice Feasting, Kidney, Liver, Spleen, Detox Kit. What's that about? Okay, so I kind of gave a, a pre, a foreshadowing with the juicing for dinner, eating breakfast and lunch, and then juicing for breakfast and dinner, eating lunch, and then juicing four times a day. So, so the first week is preparation for the second week, which is juicing four times a day. And then the third week is all raw. Now, I created something, my other special sauce, according to Catherine, mm. is spread the love. So spread the love is a nut meat pate. So we take pumpkin seeds and basil, and we put it in a high-speed blender. We take spinach and walnuts, put it in a high-speed blender. We take sunflower seeds and kale. We take cashew and collard greens. We take cilantro and Brazil nuts. So we put all these combinations together with olive oil, a little bit of curry powder, a little bit of soy sauce, and some fresh garlic, and we make this pesto. And that becomes your delicious recipe for raw food. That's what anchors you in so that you will be successful eating raw. So you've got a bread spread, You've got a cracker spread. You've got a veggie dip. You've got a uh, salad dressing. Anything you want. You eat this pesto, you're going to bite your fingers. The third one that caught my attention was drum the heart. What's that about? Okay, so when you were a kid and you didn't feel well, your mommy picked you up and she would rock you, right? That's comforting to a kid. And even when you're like 10, 11, 12, you go to your mom for a hug right? So hugging makes you feel good. But when you're an adult and you're 45, who gives you a hug? <laughs> you gotta hug yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you rub your heart, your heart goes, oh. If you rub your lungs, your lungs go, oh. Now your liver's on the right side. So if you put, mm -hmm. if you put your um, hands right under the last rib and you push in on the right you can actually touch your liver. And if you put it on the left side, you can actually touch your spleen. So your liver's on the right, spleen's on the left. Now, we have some vague understanding that the liver has something to do with the blood. So the liver has three main functions. It filters the blood, dead red and white blood cells, bacteria, virus, fungus, and parasites. But the liver has another function where it codes and tags each nutrient and tells it where to go. Now, the spleen on the left, nobody knows what the spleen does. Even medical school students don't know what the spleen does. The spleen manufactures digestive enzymes. The spleen manufactures the white blood cells that become the immune system. And the spleen directs the lymphatic system, which is sort of like the Roomba, the, the robotic uh, vacuum cleaner of the body. So liver and spleen, pretty darn important. So if you touch your liver and you touch your spleen, then they feel comforted. So when I say drum up your heart, 
What I really mean is to drum all the organs. Now, the five major organs are heart, lung, liver, spleen, right kidney, left kidney. And when you ask me to do the demo of the dance, that's exactly what we did. We drummed up the heart. Now, we have seven endocrine glands and we have seven chakras. And science just seems to confirm that each one of the seven chakras coordinates with each one of the seven endocrine glands. So we have the thyroid here. Then we have the thymus, which is halfway between the breastbone and the, and the throat. Then we have the pancreas. And again, if you put your right hand with the thumb directly underneath the breastbone, and you put your left hand behind the right hand. So this is the stomach. This is the actual size and location of the stomach. This is your pancreas. And if you slide the left hand to the left, that's the spleen and the right hand to the right, that's the liver. So stomach, pancreas, liver, spleen are all right here. And then when the diaphragm pushes the air out of the lungs, it pushes up against pancreas, stomach, spleen, and liver. So the uh, diaphragm actually massages those organs, okay? So when we're talking about drumming up the heart, we're actually touching our organs. Now, when you go to a doctor for a physical exam, he puts on gloves and he uses a metal object to touch you. He never actually touches you. And if you recall the picture I, I took of Catherine, I used a warm jade paddle and touched her. I, I heated it up and I used this jade paddle to touch everywhere on her abdomen her, and her chest, which then warmed all of her internal organs. And that's better than any medication or any drug you could think of. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so moving on. He's stunned. Okay. I have to ask my, my favorite question. Okay. All right. So <laughs> what is your greatest passion and what brings you peace? Well, if you haven't been listening for the last 15 minutes, <laughs> My greatest passion is seeing the light bulb goes on in people's eyes when I get them to dance. Because most people feel a little, uh, I'm not a good dancer. Uh, uh, can I just like stand in the back? I'm not really good at it. You can't be cool. You can't. And what do I do? We have little old ladies in the class. What do I do? I grab them by the hand. I drag them in the center of the circle and I get them to dance, okay? I get everybody to dance. That's why, Kuj, I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get you up on your train. I'm gonna get you out. So, so do you have any new products, um, Dr. Love? Let's talk about your new products. I'm really excited about your future products. Okay, well, I came up with something called the Chi Spray. I don't know if you can see this, okay? And you see the little bubbles? Okay, yeah. so the bubbles is your chi. And after about 10 minutes, the bubbles go away. So the chi in your body, there you go, the chi in your body has to be constantly moving. We got a new disease that they discovered 10 years ago called the sickness of sitting or the sitting disease. So they say sitting four hours a day is equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes. To me, that's mind boggling. So, so 2009, they did a, a set of studies to show that sitting for four hours is what, um, uh, it's what causes the lungs to have a problem, okay? So, um, so what we wanna do is to get people to dance and move so that they're not sitting all the time. So the chi spray is something that helps you develop your chi. And then we've got a chi roll on, two new <laughs> products, the chi spray and the chi roll on. I understand that spirituality is an important element in your healings and living a principle-centered life. How did you do that for yourself? 
Well, <clears throat> I started off, um, I was working on Wall Street and I had panic attacks. And I was, I had people's money. You know, some people give me 20,000, some people give me 50,000, and I'm investing their money in Wall Street. And if I lost their money, you know, so I had panic attacks. And mm -hmm. one day I lost control of the car. And my car jumped the curb and my front wheel ended up in a flower bed. And so I was totally panicked and I, and I had to stop people and they had to help me get my car out of the flower bed. And while we were struggling, I saw a sign that said, learn to meditate. So I quickly wrote down the number and I called it and it was Buddhism meditation. And I was like, oh my God. So then I read everything about Buddhism I read everything about meditation. I started reading up on all the gurus and that's how I got started. And then I realized at a certain point, I am the guru. I don't need a guru, I'm the guru. So when you tap into your spirit ritual realization, you can have a direct connect to source energy, whatever name you wanna call it, God, Allah, Hashem, whatever you want to call it, you can have a direct source. So you don't need a priest, a rabbi, an imam. You don't need a holy book. You don't need anything. You just need to meditate and connect to source. And that's how I did it. We talked to a few people about your preventive health care, your healing, and your educational services. Following is what they shared with us. And your name is? Luz Bermeo. And you used to wake up every morning with pain in your kidney area. Yes, last year, well, for a long time, probably years. So I used to live in that way for uh, the whole part of my life, living with this, with this pain. Saying always, I will, I will take care of, of this problem later, later, later until one day I woke up with um, some um, bad coordination on my fingers mm -hmm. and coordination on my walking. So I had to go to the hospital because it was a sign of a stroke. So when I was in the hospital, I was with the bleeding on the sign of the brain. Bleeding um, on the right side of the brain. So the first week of December, we called Dr. Love. So immediately we went to the beach. So I explained to him what happened with me. So I remember we started on Tuesday, like uh, I couldn't move my, my neck because I was scared with pain. So we did Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. By Friday, I started to run and then I said, oh my God, I'm running. <laughs> like uh, I forgot about my problem in the brain. Mm -hmm. And then I started to eat better and I I noticed I didn't have pain on this part of the kidney. So I can tell now like 95% uh, of the pain went away. Thanks to the exercising with Dr. Love, thanks to the way that I'm eating now, trying to stay away from sugar, bread, you know, the bad things Salt, that we fried foods like a feeling uh, like uh, you are stressed, like uh, you wanna sleep, you wanna be in bed. That's how I feel. That's what most of people is feeling all the time. But we have to continue the life and working and working. So one day you wake up and you are in the hospital. Mm. So that's why I recommend the Dr. Law <laughs> or any kind of treatment that make you feel better. In this case, Dr. Law is here with us. My name is Dennis Peters. I'm from New York City. I'm a commercial real estate developer. Dr. Love has impacted my life. 25 years ago when I met him, I was referred to him by a retired doctor. And I myself had the best doctors available to me in Miami Beach that I could ever want. And I was suffering from a very bad sinus condition where I had infections that would not go away. 
Western medicine move to do a very evasive surgery on me because the infection lasted over a year. And after the best doctors available and the top medicines at the time to treat infections, I was unable to get rid of the infection and they were setting me up for a very evasive sinus treatment, a scraping, if you will, of your sinuses with stainless instruments. The fear was that the infection ultimately could have went to my brain. How that finished off was I never got the operation and Dr. George Love treated me with traditional Chinese herbs. And within one week, I was already coming off of the infection and never to return in that fashion again. It was amazing. In one week, treated with traditional vetted Chinese herbs and some acupuncture as well, cured within a week. After a year of seeing Western doctors and plied with every single best medication of antibiotic and could not get better. In a week, I was better. And that's gospel. I'm 58 years old as of now. And George has been treating me for 25 years and I don't take not one medicine. I don't take one pill. He's helped me also with, with severe, severe back and joint injuries. I'm on no pain medication. I don't take anything. My name is Margaret. I'm a native New Yorker, born, born elsewhere, but I grew up in New York and it's very embedded into who I am from all the years I've been here. And I work in a nonprofit, working with companies to pipeline more people with disabilities into the workforce. He's more than just an acupuncturist. He's more than just a Qigong practitioner. He's really instilling in people, this is a lifestyle. You live it, you breathe it, you eat it. So he's trying to change everything that people do from the moment they wake up, from their first breath to the first bite or first drink to the moment you lie down and you rest for the night. In case you can't tell, I am of Chinese descent. And to see a man like Dr. Love to be practicing something that is embedded in my culture. I wanted to see what is he offering. And he makes it fun, just the fact that he has a Qigong dance. And I've seen children five years old and up, and adults having so much fun laughing and smiling and feeling so different when the class ends, wishing, oh no, we want to do more of this. We just want more of Dr. Love, because we love Tai Chi once, once that class is done, or even in the first five minutes, you're hooked. So whenever I do interact with Dr. Love, there's profound influence coming from him, whether he's challenging me mentally, physically, emotionally, there's always something more that I know I can do whenever I'm around him, because Anything that he does feed me, I know it's just the tip of the iceberg compared to what he has to share. So I'm very grateful I did come across Dr. Love and he's, he's a staple in my life. My name is uh, Brother Tafik, also known in the community as Dr. Shaka Zulu. I am from New York City and I've known of the works of Dr. Love for over 20 years. However, I've had the great honor to learn from Dr. Love and serve the community with Dr. Love as a community health acupuncturist. I've been a practitioner of the Blue Dragon Qigong medical in which it's a uh, combination of uh, martial arts as well as healing arts. Dr. Love's body of work is he, he himself is like a walking holy scroll is so wonderful because he taps into the medicine aspect of the Blue Buddha from the uh, concept of Tibet, all the way from the concept of the knowledge of medicine, all the way going to ancient Kemet in ancient Egypt. But one of the greatest gifts that I've gotten from Dr. Love is his uh, way of transforming health and healing into love. 
he has changed. He has uh, helped to positively impact my life in so many different ways. I feel he has changed me from a warrior into more of a warrior scholar, a warrior scholar that is now a priest because I have more close to the connection of the mind, the body, and the spirit. So the, everyone, this, particularly these days in Western society, even now in Eastern society, religion, philosophy is all teaching people to rely upon the answers outside of ourselves. However, the reality is the answer is within oneself. And so he was able to bring me to that consciousness of connection that no matter where I am, however I'm at, the answer was within myself. The highest recommendations of all recommendations, the highest of honor and bestowment. You, if anyone, if anyone is ever even considering anything dealing with any type of integrative healing, so-called alternative healing, wellness, mindfulness, meditation, Tai Chi, Qi Gong, martial arts, or even what I call now martial science, the main individual that you must connect to, you must look out for, is the Honorable Dr. George Xavier Love. You have to, you have to, you have to. Great. Dr. Love, you have you are offering six exciting um, talks during your national tour. Could you tell us what they are about and why it is important for people who seek to live long lives and prosper? Tibetan dream programming using affirmations and journaling. What is that about in 60 seconds? Okay, so earlier in the show, I talked about sleepitation, and that's exactly what it is. It's, a, it's about the breathing, the meditation and the posture and the affirmations that you say as you're falling asleep right after you've done the, the mantra chanting, okay? So how do you change your life? How do you transform your life? So we have a conscious awareness that says, I wanna be better, I wanna do better. And then you have a subconscious program that says, you're fat, you're always gonna be fat, don't even bother to try, go ahead, Get some more chicken wings. <laughs> so, so we have a self-sabotage. So this subconscious program is what sabotages us. So this dream programming with the affirmations and the journaling is how we change the subconscious to positive choice. And we do that when the brain is in theta. So there's beta, which is waking state. There's alpha, which is where we're falling asleep. There's theta, which is the dream healing state. And then there's delta, which is the deep sleep. Then we go back into theta, then we go back into alpha, and then we wake up briefly, and then we fall back asleep. So we wake up and fall back to sleep four, five, six times every night. But when you hit that point in theta, that's when we can transform. That's when we can make those changes for the subconscious. And that is why I'm excited about teaching that. Your second talk is Chi Dance, Rhythm, and Breathe for Emotional Release. That sounds fun. Could you explain, could you please explain what that talk is about? Okay, so anger, fear, worry are the three negative emotions that drive us. Anger, fear, anger, fear, anger, fear, worry. Anger, fear, anger, fear, anger, fear, worry. So as we flip back and forth between those emotional states, I use the dance to get you out of that. So we have the liver dance that gets you rid of anger, frustration, resentment, shame, blame, and guilt. And then we have the spleen two-step, which is waving hands like clouds that gets you out of worry. And then we have the kidney flow, which gets you out of fear and transforms you into courage. So those are those three dances. And then we do the lung swim for grief and sorrow. And then we do the open your heart side to side, she goes side to side. And we do that for uh, sadness and depression. So we cover all of the negative emotions in just five dances. And I'm really excited about that because that's the thing that sticks with people the most 
because they've got to memorize the words and they've got to memorize the dance. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Your third talk, detoxification and purification of body mind, heart mind, and divine mind. I'm actually coming out of a 30-day detox as we speak. Very, very empowering. I feel like a new person. So please explain to our audience, what is that all about? Okay, we are familiar with the term body, mind, spirit, but that doesn't really grasp what's, what's really going on. So I call it body, mind, heart, mind, divine mind. So we are animal, we are human, and we are divine. So who's driving the bus? Are you letting the animal drive the bus? Are you letting the human who is fallible and makes tons of mistakes every day, are you letting them drive the bus? Or are you allowing the divine mind to drive the bus? So everybody says, well, I want the divine mind. But if you're stuck in um, jealousy and, uh, uh, and envy and desire, which are all human conditions, there's nothing bad about that but it's when you're stuck there. And then our animal, it's like, I gotta have it, I gotta have it, I need it, I want it, uh. So, so between the animal and the human, we make a lot of bad choices. So I teach that it is the mind that connects the animal, the human, and the divine. So I do something called Egyptian mind science, where we talk about the emo brain or the limbic system. And we talk about how the memory, the emotional memory, is stored in the amygdala. And it's that emotional memory that hijacks us into making bad choices. So the fun part is learning how to regain control of your mind. Your fourth talk is Asian food therapy, transitioning to and maintaining an exciting plant-based diet and raw food prep. I'm very interested in this topic. So you don't just advocate giving up meat cold turkey. What is this talk about? Okay, so Asian food therapy looks at your internal condition. Are you hot and moist? Are you cold and moist? Are you hot and dry? Are you cold and dry? So everyone fits somewhere in those four corners. Now, obviously the center is the most uh, desirable place to be. But if you're hot and moist, then you want something to balance your internal condition that's cooling and drying. So for example, let's say a woman wants to lose weight and she's kind of uh, doughy, billowy, she's kind of fluffy. So she's 30, 40 pounds overweight but her skin is cold to the touch. She's easily chilled, she wears sweaters. So she, her internal is cold and moist. So to balance her, we need something hot and dry. So she needs spicy food, she needs ginger, she needs cinnamon, she needs cayenne, she needs garlic. So we wanna balance her internal condition. And by the same token, you might have a, a, an older gentleman who's kind of crotchety, and he's got dry skin, he's kind of thin, and he's, and he's hot and dry. So that guy needs the, the cooling and moist. He needs the salads and the fruits, okay? So that's what we gotta do to, to balance out. So that's what we call Asian food therapy. Your fifth talk is reversing aging and immortality. We didn't get to that on my seven day trip. However, I'm very interested in this topic. So tell us, what is this about? Okay, so when we talk about reverse aging, in Chinese medicine, the number one thing in aging is the kidneys. Now we have kidney yin and we have kidney yang. So kidney yin is the filtration function. That's the one everyone thinks about. But kidney yang is the endocrine function. That's the one that makes the hormones. That's the one that affects your sex drive. So if the kidneys diminish as you get older, you get dry skin, your eyes get wrinkled, you get laugh lines, you're pretty much 
looking like a wrinkled old prune. So mm -hmm. what I do is I teach you how to not let that happen. And that's what reverse aging is all about. Finally, your sixth talk is the art and science of unconditional love and Tantra yoga. Okay, I'm interested. Is this talk about what I think it's about? Taking no. love making to the next level? No, 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 no. It is absolutely not. Um, so unconditional love is acceptance, forgiveness, non-judgment, compassion and understanding, and loving kindness. So there's five aspects of unconditional love. And you have to love yourself first before you can love another. And if you weren't taught how to love yourself, how can you possibly love another? Okay? So everyone thinks about making love, like that's the thing, I wanna make love. And you know, that's not where you need to start. Okay? <laughs> You really need to start with loving you, okay? And then once you learn how to love you, then it's a whole lot easier to anticipate the needs of the person that you think is the object of your affection, all right? So men have this totally mistaken idea that women are like on this pedestal, they're untouchable, they're unfathomable, that they can't figure what women want and women just want you to be honest and true and be your word be a man just be yourself and so men go through all these contortions to impress women and women are like not impressed sorry you know, so that doesn't work and by the same token women go through all these contortions oh my butt's too big my tits are too small you know my this my that i'm uh, and they self-criticize their body parts, not really, not realizing that a guy doesn't care how big you are. As long as he can put his hand over it, he's happy. He's not that critical. <laughs> so we make these things up in our heads about body parts and we lose the heart-to-heart -heart connection. So what, what Tantra Yoga is all about is being in touch with who you are, all right? So I'm touching my own skin. Now, if you've ever petted a cat, how does the cat react when you touch? The cat goes, ooh, ah, I like that. And you pet the dog, the dog is the same way. Well, what if you did non-sexual touch with your person, the object of your infect, uh, affection, and you just stroke them lightly? What would happen to the fluid underneath the skin. That's connected to the endocrine system and that's connected to the hormones. And that's like, wow. So what I teach is non-sexual touch, non-sexual intimacy, and then everything else follows after that. So I hope that answers your question. Yes. <laughs> awesome. As you know, I am one of your most loyal and dedicated clients and students. You inspire me and have impressed me with your teachings. You taught me how to commit to self-love by making healthier choices daily, keeping it simple, and making it fun. And this is why we are pleased to announce today that we at Clearly Works have agreed to team up with Dr. Love in spreading his message and products worldwide. Please contact me if you want to book him and have him demonstrate his exciting techniques in your city or country. For more information on Dr. Love or any of our empowerment coaches, contact me at facebook.com forward slash Works or quailyworks at gmail.com or 973-498-8849. Four, nine. Also, Dr. Love, you have a special gift for our audience. Could you explain it also in 60 seconds? Okay, so I'm going to give you my free ebook. It's not a free ebook, it's a gift. And the title of the book is Where Do You Go When You Go to Sleep? 
And so I explained the whole process of how your brain waves slow down, how your brain actually um, does a self-assessment of your activities of the day, how you process your activities. And then I teach you how to create a sleep ritual and a morning ritual. All that's included in my ebook, Where Do You Go When You Go to Sleep? To get this bonus, contact us at qualyworks at gmail.com. That's K-W-E-L-I-W-O-R-K-S at gmail.com. Send us your email, like Quayley Works on Facebook, mention that you saw and shared this program with your friends. Dr. Love, you also have two websites. What are they and what do you share in each of them? Okay, so my main website is lovechinesemedicine.com and I've had that website forever. But when I focused on the, the medical qigong, it seemed like I, it needed to have its own website. So the secondary website is called Blue Dragon Qigong Academy.com. Now, people have suggested, oh, make that really short, you know, but I want to put the Blue Dragon out there. The dragon represents immortality. The blue represents calm and peace. So people think that they have to work hard for their health, and they don't. All they need to do is breathe, meditate, and do some internal exercises. And that is the focus of the Blue Dragon Qigong Academy. Brother, as a fellow New both of us are from New York and are now based in Florida. I'm proud of you for all you've done. And I'm equally excited about what we're going to be doing next together. Dr. Love, Godspeed as you continue to share your stories, messages, and products around the nation and the world. Thank you. And I'm coming for you, Cooge. I want to make you as healthy as me. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for you. And I have some friends that um, I'm going to have with me. That's great. Dr. Love, thank you for coming to us live from Delray Beach, Florida. And thank you to our audience for joining us on our 10th episode. Let us know what you think. Okay. Thank you, Catherine, for being the producer of this TV show. And uh, a special heartfelt thanks for all the um, testimonials. And that was quite a surprise. Uh, I know. It's always a surprise to everyone. You're welcome. I'm Catherine Marori for Living the Life You Love, coming to you live from New York, New York. And I'm Cooge for Quayley Works, coming to you live from Orlando, Florida. Free your mind and empower yourself. Join us next time when our featured guest will be Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan is more than just a remarkable young man. He is an amazing multidisciplined professional, circus arts instructor, extreme entertainer, and flow art self-empowerment educator. I know what you're thinking. What does all that mean? Let me explain. He breathes and walks through fire, juggles on stilts, all while teaching students to increase their focus and self-confidence. Bring your fire extinguishers. I guarantee Jonathan will light it up. However, don't try any of what you see at home. And until next time, live passionately.